Pouncing and Grapple are finally in Path of Titans, and with it, a lot of new hitchhikers. The new mechanics changes the gameplay, not only for the raptors and sarcosuchus or crocodilians, but also for the rest of them, and I mean all of them. Throw everything you knew about previous gameplay of Letterman Matrix. Now I will teach you how to play the new Raptor. Hello there, my name is Adam Bokte, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Latvian Natrix. There's only been a few days since the update of the game and upload of this video. So with that in mind, there's probably going to be a some rework with the, the pouncing mechanics. So some future updates may change the way you play Latvian Natrix. If there will be changes, then I think there shouldn't be too much changes for the gameplay in general. In any case, if you find something I say disagreeable, just comment down below in the comment fashion sense. In this video, we will be going over the Latvinatrix arsenal, the subspecies you should grow, its terrain compatibility, and the fight it can find itself in. And at the end, I'll summarize. Also, I would like to note that I am not going to do any 1v1 hunt or 1v pack as a Latvinatrix. Disagree with me if you must, but this is a video on how you are going to fight as an Latvian Natrix properly, and when we wanting something as an Latvian Natrix, well, that's not going to end well for you. In any case, if you can fight something when we want, then you don't need this video. The head abilities for Latvian Natrix have two options. We have the standard head ability, which does medium damage, nothing too much about it. Then we have Raptor Strikes, which is a quick attack that increases power with each hit. We have one sensibility, Moonlight Hunter, which increases damage output and increases movement speed during nighttime. We have two options for hide. We have Night Stalker, which increases lead and venom heal during nighttime. The other option are Slick Feathers, which disables other pouncers and grabbers' abilities to pounce and grab you. Your leg abilities, and also one of your most important abilities, Pounce basically makes you able to latch onto other people and also perform attacks with other abilities. The tail ability is just a tail fan ability that gives you a quick boost of speed. You have three options on call abilities. You have the hiss ability, which reduces the incoming damage by 60% for 20 seconds. The second option is call of the night terrors, which basically increases stamina recovery, damage output, it can be stacked up to 10 times, but can only be used during night time. The last one is a bark ability that basically just increases uh, the attack damage for every raptors in your group within 30 meters for 20 seconds. To be completely honest, it kind of depends on your time of day or and your situation on which uh, call you should use. In my case, I use either bark or hiss during the daytime, but at night time I switch to the call of the night terrors. The same applies to the hide abilities. I usually use Night Stalker during nighttime and the other one during daytime. As for bite abilities, I would use the one that increases its damage output with each attack. Rather than the old stamina, balance, attack, etc. subspecies like before, now we can actually see how much percentage on the stats the different subspecies grants. In my case, I'm going to use the 10% damage during nighttime in this video, but you can also choose the stamina recovery, which I think is the best second option, at least if you're going to fight during the daytime. The 25% extra jump boosts are nice, but the Latvian Natrix already have a pretty decent jump, so I feel like it's a bit unnecessary. So I would either go for stamina recovery or damage during night. If we talk about the best location for Latvian Natrix to have their hunts or fights, then I would say an area with a lot of hindrances and elevations. One of the highest points for Latvian Natrix and the other raptors are their high mobility and speed. A location like this would give you plenty of cover, and also possibly make it easier for you to pounce on enemies. An open area are nice and workable too. However, I would recommend that only if you have a lot of members in your pack. The extra hindrances and cover are supposed to make it difficult for your enemies to keep up with your movement. However, if there's many of you, then you don't really need that cover. 
your number already makes it difficult for your enemies to keep up with you. Be that as it may, I would still recommend an area with some bushes that will grant you some cover should you take more damage than expected or get low on stamina. This cover will help you even more if you don't have high numbers. I also recommend an area that doesn't have a body of water nearby. If the creature you latch onto enters water with you in tow, then you will lose a lot of mobility and you will be easy picking. I would like to note again that this video are not meant for soloing as a platformatrix, but to teach you how to work in a group. If you try to solo hunt, then you'll just make it more difficult for yourself. A lot of matrix aren't really meant to do solo hunts. After all, it is no Apex. Stat-wise, you are among the weakest of all creatures in the game, so trying to do stuff solo definitely a bad idea. Also, as you are alone, it will be more easier for your enemy to keep up with you. If you're in a group, you might not even need to lift a finger or a claw in this case. This is where team play really shines the brightest. When you hunt as a group, patience is key and you need to wait for your turn to pounce the enemy. Once you see an opening, that is when it's your turn to shine. Pay attention to how the bite ability has a number which increases with each bite. You don't really need to know the details too much but you only need to know that you're doing a good job. When you're out of stamina, that means you're at your weakest. That's when your teammates will come in and cover you while you rest up and get stamina. This is also something you can't really do as a solo. Remember, with this update, there are those who have received a hide that disables your ability to pounce on people. And when you do try to pounce on them, you'll just jump into them. And nothing beside you just gliding off them will happen. Personally, I would recommend to not attack those with such heights. Remember, as hunters, it is up to you to pick and choose your targets. Being able to pick out the right target is a skill in itself, and what makes one a true hunter. Hunting during the day means that you will not be hunting with your extra buffs. That is by all means okay. The buffs you can get and your high numbers might be enough to kill many of the creatures you stumble upon. Unless your target knows how to buckle properly, then you'll be able to bleed him to death. And even then, your combined damage efforts are enough to finish the job. Remember, in an open field, you can get even the top dog of the food chain to start running for their lives. Of course, you do need to watch out for their counter-attacks. With the pouncing mechanic, larger creatures just means bigger targets. However, they are not going to go down without a fight. You can only have so many buffs during the daytime. It is during night time that you are at your most powerful, so when the sun goes down, your danger level rises. The best plan would be to single out a target during the time you have best visibility, then follow that target until your night abilities activates. Also, this is just a point that, that I came up with during our hunt. Try to lead the target away from populated areas this is just to prevent any lag issues and will keep your game most fluid as possible. Sure, the lags can work in your favor, but it can also work against you. Once your night ability is activates, that's when you'll strike.
During the night time, you are at your most powerful. Therefore, I usually recommend to hunt the big stuff during night time. Again, daytime hunt works as well, but if you want the best odds for success, then I would go for night hunt. So to sum it all up, if you're low in numbers, try to fight them in an area with a lot of hindrances and elevations that will work better in your favor due to your higher mobility. Wait until it's your turn to pounce the enemy, an opening so to say, and when you do pounce on him or her, just lay it into them. And when you're low on stamina, I say 25 or so at least, then you can jump off and then run back and let your teammates cover you. Hunting during the daytime is okay, at least if you pick the, a wise target. However, if you want the best odds, then I will definitely wait until nighttime when you have all of your buffs. Now I am curious, what do you think about the update? At least, those I played with seem to love it at least, but of course only you can give your opinion. In any case, since the update now has arrived, the combat guide videos will resume as normal. If you have any suggestion on what creature I should cover, then comment it down below. And with that, I will see you guys later.